And hello, everyone. Thank you very much for joining us. It gives me great pleasure to welcome you all to, to today's discussion, balancing digital acceleration challenges and opportunities for small and medium businesses. The past 12 months have been, let's just say, challenging, shall we? For many businesses and leaders have faced constant decisions on how to ensure their business can benefit or leverage a broad range of technology in order to keep pivoting. I do apologize for using that word, but it is the correct word for what has been happening. In the last year, the pace of change and technology adoption has seen digital transformation replaced by digital acceleration across industry and across business size. So how can SMBs overcome challenges and uncover opportunities to control their digital future? Allow me to introduce myself. My name is Andrew Klein. I'm genuinely excited to be here today with you all hosting this panel discussion. We have got with us an excellent group of SMB and technology leaders with us today to explore the key trends and the many insights that SMB leaders need to know to shape their digital initiatives for future growth. Without further ado, it is time to meet our panelists, ladies and gentlemen, joining us today, we have Foad Fadagi. He is the Managing Director and Principal Analyst with Telsight. We also have John Evans. John is the CEO with Enablus. Joining us also is Alexi Boyd. Alexi is the Interim CEO with the Council of Small Business Organisations Australia, otherwise known as COSBOA. And finally, we have Brendan Donohoe. Brendan is the Executive General Manager Business with the NBN. Before we get into the discussion and the questions, I just wanted to ask each and every one of our panelists, we'll start with Foad, just tell us a little bit about the work that you do and why you are so passionate about technology. Foad, over to you. Well, Andrew, I've been a technology industry analyst and journalist for just over 20 years now, and I think uh, for me, it's such an evolving, fast-paced environment that it's there's nothing um, more exciting than waking up and reading about the latest technology trends. Uh, so for me, it's it's a passion that's been running for a number of years, and uh, it doesn't seem to be stopping anytime soon. Thank you for that, Thank you for that. John Evans. Same question to you. You're the CEO of Enablus. Tell us a little bit about the work that you do and why you love technology. Yeah, sure. Thanks, Andrew. Um, so, I mean, I guess enable us, we're committed to easing the burden of owning and operating technology, typically for companies that are quite distributed, have quite a few sites and, and lean IT. We've probably been doing this now for 15 years or so. And um, I think the thing that's exciting and, and certainly, certainly for me is, you know, passion is that um, it's, it's an ever-evolving ever um, space. space. Technology, technology these days is really driving immense amounts of value for businesses you know, uh, of all sizes, it probably used to be the domain of the large enterprises, but very much these days is now coming down into the sort of SMB space, which is exciting. Really, for me, the passion is all about helping those businesses gain the maximum value from the latest technology that's available. Um, and for us, really, we're concentrating on security, connectivity and collaboration services. All right, thanks All right, for that, thanks for John. That. Let me ask the same question of uh, Alexi. You are the interim CEO of the uh, Council of Small Business Organisations Australia. Tell us a little bit about the work that you are doing relatively recently in your role uh, at COSBOA and about your passion and interest in technology. Yeah, thanks, Andrew. Um, I've been working with small and medium sized businesses for a number of years and in this new role as the interim CEO of COSBOA, it kind of takes things to a new level in terms of the difference that an organisation like a peak body for small business can make. Um, basically, what we're doing is trying to support small business in their digital journey through making a difference to the policy that's created at the highest levels with a small business lens um, in mind, mm -hmm. making sure that policymakers are always aware of what small businesses are going through on a day-to-day -day basis with their digital journey and making sure that they're supporting them as much as um, small businesses support one another. All right, thanks for that, Alexi. And last but not least, Brendan, uh, the EGM business with the NBN. Tell us a little bit about the work that you do and your, no doubt, uh, passion, obsession with technology. Thanks, Andrew. And I'd actually say less about the passion about technology, but more about the passion about what technology can do. I think we live in amazing times. I think, don't think there's ever been a better time for SMBs. As per John's point, 
thanks to cloud and applications, technology has now become affordable and available for, for, for all small businesses. And now they can compete. And in fact, they're more nimble than bigger, bigger businesses and enterprises. You gotta think, well, why MBN if that's my passion? Uh, Cause I think that you've got to have the right network. You've got to have the right plumbing. So we're a critical enabler. So digital technology, awesome for business. Um, and uh, you know, things like MBN and uh, access is critical to access that technology. So that's what I'm deeply passionate about. Great, thanks for that, Brendan. So that's just setting the scene as to who is joining us on the panel. I think it is time to get into our questions right now for our panelists. I'm gonna direct these questions to individual panelists. Not all of you will answer all questions, but feel free if you've got a pearl of wisdom to jump in at any point, just let me know. That would be absolutely fine. Foad, we're gonna start with you and then we'll hear Alexi's thoughts on this, our first question. The past year has been, as I said earlier on, has been transformational for SMBs and many had to change their work models how they engage with customers, how their employees engaged and collaborated with each other, and, and so much more. And many of them did it literally overnight, or at least in a very, very condensed period of time. So I'm interested in your thoughts, Foad. What have been, from what you've seen, the biggest changes in your view in the last 18 months or so? Well, Andrew, I think um, for small businesses, it's been a difficult trading environment, even leading up to the pandemic. You might not remember, but uh, we had some floods and fires that preceded the pandemic. And many small businesses um, during the pandemic certainly had to rely on um, government assistance uh, to help them through the difficult times. And I guess what we saw is a massive changing in consumer behavior around how uh, they shop, how they um, get information and how they conduct their lives because they were locked down for a, a large part of that time. So there was a number of forces coming together, um, disruptive forces that were impacting small business. Now, when we think about digital transformation or digital disruption, um, traditionally it was about being disrupted by a, you know, a online only player or a big company like Uber and so forth. But I guess we've seen these other disruptions such as um, you know, pandemics and, and fires and bushfires and, and so forth that have also added to this disruption. And I think for a lot of businesses, um, this was a time where a lot of reflection was conducted on the, the way the business was put together and, and uh, the business models. And as a result, we saw a lot of acceleration in the adoption of technologies by businesses to keep up with their customers, but also to stay ahead of some of the challenges that might be around the corner. Okay, thanks for that, Foad. Now, Lexi, you're literally in the middle of what's going on in small business on a day-to-day -day basis. From your perspective, from a COSBOA perspective, what have been the biggest changes that you've seen? Well, we all know how fantastic small business is at pivoting. Um, we've been known very well for being able to change and move maneuver quickly. And that was one thing that the was a strength of small businesses at the time when um, the huge flux of changes happened during lockdowns. But let's remember, we haven't only just gone into one lockdown, we've been in and out of five or six of them in, in the case of somewhere like Melbourne. So it's been a constant change and a constant battle to be able to maneuver, um, work from home, work from your business, deal with your staff, um, in an, on an online basis and manage those relationships as opposed to having them in-house. So there's been huge amounts of change, not only in relation to tech um, and our ability to access work and continue that you know, that relationship we have with our clients, but also the relationship that we have with our staff. So largely what we're seeing with small businesses is um, a great deal of stress and strain, and that's being exacerbated obviously with, uh, you know, the continual lockdowns and the continual um, uh, inability to really be able to plan for the future. So it's a difficult situation for SMBs, absolutely. And what we're seeing is a lot of, um, I guess, angst and frustration about what happens at the upper levels, who, who controls our businesses. And we're not used to having other people control what we do in our work, in our business. We're used to being the ones who control it as small businesses. So it's been a whole lot of flux, a whole lot of change. Our key stakeholders are changing continually. How we work changes continually. Um, but you know, those foundations of what you do and your widget remains the same. So I would say that when, when we're thinking about the, the state of small businesses in the last 12 months, digit, digitization has been a 
major uh, change, uh, change in terms of change management, um, but it's changed the way that we relate, not only deal with ourselves and what we do, but how we deal with our stakeholders as well. Thanks, Alexi. I actually want to drill down a little bit more on, on that with, with you. We'll start with you, Alexi. How did the changes that you've just been referring to, how did they put pressure on SMB's digital capa uh, capabilities? How did you see that impacting on them? Well, I've, I've got a really good example, actually. Um, so uh, there's a video production company that, that has been one of our members and we've worked with quite considerably um, on this digital transformation. Now, as you can imagine, um, digital uh, production requires a huge amount of data and a huge amount of data moving in, in places and, and obviously a very large server to be able to control that. So the simple act of just picking up your computer and moving it home, um, it seems simple enough because it's just about a piece of tech and you can just move it, but it's actually more than that. Um, and ensuring that you've got a foundation of, of high speed internet and high speed adapt, adaptab, adaptability to be able to move that equipment quickly and get it into a new space is really important. So um, high upload and download is very important. For example, um, Thinking between locations is not easy either. That's where you rely quite heavily on, say, a management IT consultant to be able to support the business. Um, but what happens is when a lot of those businesses have moved home, say, for example, here in beautiful Hornsby, where I live, what's actually happened is the, um, the upload speed has dropped down quite considerably. So we were at 40 megabytes, we're now at 20 because we've got all the kids uh, at home accessing Netflix, et cetera, because we've got lots of other businesses in the area who have suddenly gone to a residential area. And so uh, in terms of the difficulty of that transition, plus trying to actually maintain um, the business and maintain that you're, you're still meeting your deadlines that your clients require has been quite difficult. Overall, it's been um, easier thanks to ensuring that um, those structures and that infrastructure is in place beforehand. It's made life a lot easier for businesses um, like this video production company, but in general, it's still been a huge learning curve for small businesses to know how to move that equipment, what's required. Some of them haven't even got relationships with management IT consultants in the beginning. So trying to scramble to suddenly realize, oh my goodness, I really need a good advisor in this space and make sure that I've got a good person helping me. So that state of flux was not just about the tech maneuverability, but the access to, to data and upload download speeds, infrastructure in place beforehand, and surrounding yourself with really good advisors and good people who can support you. Okay, thanks for that, Lexi. John and Brendan, I haven't forgotten about you. I'll bring you in in just a moment. But before I do that, I just want to ask Foad to comment on, uh, on the same question. How did the changes put pressures on SMB's digital capabilities from a tell site perspective? What have you seen? Look, I think, um, <clears throat> excuse me, one of the biggest um, areas of growth in the last few years is this number or percentage of SMBs that have high connectivity needs. Now, our research recently showed that three quarters of SMEs have these this high connectivity needs. And uh, this is ex ex exasperated um, given the, the stay-at-home orders and so forth. We also found that around 43% um, of SMEs have office space um, businesses as well. So there's been a massive amount of disruption to this office space approach, um, notwithstanding some of the other challenges as well. Um, if we look across the board, what we see is that um, digital natives or those born in the digital age characterized by um, you know, the abundance of computers and smartphones and so forth, make up around about 57% of the SMB um, workforce. So we're in an environment where, you know, almost half um, aren't digital natives. And certainly there's a bit of a skills challenge as well that's um, emerging. And if you, I guess, look, look at businesses today that are well down the path of uh, transforming their businesses, um, the skill shortage side of things um, does emerge as one of the challenges. Right, thanks, Fouad. So Brendan, interested in your thoughts, obviously the NBN have been at the centre of this, the word broadband and Wi-Fi and capability, all those words, we've been uttering them as small businesses more in the last 18 months probably than, than ever before. So from what you've seen, how has the NBN network supported businesses during this time, last 18 months or so? Yeah, and first of all, I'd like to say congratulations to the SMBs 
that, that, are, that are listening because the S- SMBs adapted so quickly. Um, the take up of technology was incredible and people adapted very quickly to work from home, hybrid working, et cetera. So first of all, congratulations. What we saw in our network was obviously a big, a big increase in, in the usage of, of business applications. In fact, we've seen a, a doubling um, um, of that usage. And to Alexi's point, um, the common the conversation I have with SMBs is, I don't think SMBs understand that there are various varieties and options with MBN, not just one flavor. I often have conversations with people about my MBN connection. What MBN connection do you have? And they're not really sure. So what's really important, and the lines are blurred, obviously, with work from home on what is a work premise, what is a what is a home, because your home is your work premise in a lot of cases at the moment. And I think what's important is the difference between, in most cases, business usage and home usage. So if you think about the average home watching things like Netflix, you're predominantly downloading. When you watch Netflix, you're pulling information down from the internet, and there's not much in fact, very little you're sending back, back up again. So what in all of that is I think businesses need to look at not only from their, for their office but also for home, what internet connection are you on? Because you need to think about your current needs, where you're heading, the applications and digital use you want in the future and make sure that you're equipped for the future. We've learned lots and we've had to adapt pretty quickly and make sure that what, what are the services have we got available? Our normal plans that are available at home have various speeds. So if you're running a business from home, make sure you are on the, on the, right, on the right plan and make sure you look at both, to Alexi's point, both your upload and also your download speeds. All right, thanks for that, Brendan. So, Fouad and John, interested in your perspectives and the same question. John, we might bring you in. Uh, how, from what you've seen, how has the NBN network supported businesses during this time? Oh, I mean, I think, you know, as Brennan said, you know, the, the, the world has changed you now over the previous time. We've, we've seen obviously a lot of networks, you know, traditionally on sort of MPLS technology for businesses. Um, and the introduction of NBN has really, you know, changed the game, I would say. You know, the pricing constructs have really come down significantly. And, and there is fibre in, in, into now most, you know, you can get probably fibre into 90% of Australia. It might need to be built in still, but... Um, so that sheer capability of grabbing scalable bandwidth to to sort of get good connectivity is definitely available, which is great. Thanks, John. And Foad, from your perspective, how have you seen the NBN network supporting businesses? Look, I think it goes without saying that um, SMBs believe high-speed connectivity has become more important since the, since the pandemic. You know, around about 80% of our survey respondents indicated so. But I think that... The rubber hits the road when you ask them questions like um, how their business uh, might or might not have survived during this period. And, you know, one in three or 36 percent said that their business might not have survived without the NBN during uh, the pandemic. So I think what we're seeing is really um, a huge reliance on this national infrastructure to, to provide um, for the future economy. And uh, NBN is critical um, as part of that. So we're using the words shift and technology and, and transformation a fair bit, but Fala, just sticking with you, do you think there are some new shifts happening for SMBs in terms of how they now view technology and how they now view connectivity as enablers of their small and medium businesses? Yeah, absolutely. I guess you just have to look at the, the explosion in uh, cloud applications and usage of uh, cloud storage and other and other cloud-based um, approaches by SMBs. You know, uh, more than three quarters are cons- uh, considered to be these high connectivity businesses, as I mentioned previously. And of them, 65% um, say it's crucial for employee productivity. So I guess we're we're entering an environment where uh, those shifts are happening very quickly. And to to stay competitive, to to uh, be prepared for the future and to be able to move quickly when things change. Uh, Businesses are relying on uh, high-speed connectivity. Thanks for that, John. What what are some of the shifts that you've seen happening uh, in the way in which SMBs are looking at technology and connectivity? Yeah, um, I I think there's probably four key areas, I would say, that we've seen. You know, it's been mentioned a couple of times already, but there has been a very, very large shift to cloud services. So a lot of applications have moved from what could be data centers in in a lot of cases or on premise service into the cloud. That's and that's really changed the way sort of um, data traffic is is going over networks, which is quite fundamental. 
Um, that is linked very much to another big piece, which is SD1. So I would say now most people are looking at SD1 technology if they have multiple sites, particularly um, over the traditional sort of what we used to be called the MPLS networks, which were you know inherently more complex. Um, and, and I think so the, the good news about that SD1 um, is probably a simpler technology, but also the cost savings that have had have been delivered through sort of delivery of MBN services versus, you know, older, older sort of style network connectivity is really quite significant. So for many people who have probably haven't had a review of, you know, a network that they currently have to, to what is now available, I would say that's obviously a you know, big point. And then a the couple of other things, obviously, um, I think security is really, really big. You know, it, it's it's always in the press these days. So many people have moved from probably what were relatively secure application setups to now moving them into, you know, in, into the internet, in effect. So there's a lot more um, focus needed on keeping users and data safe. And that's a, that's a bit of a challenge we, we definitely see. And then, And I think finally, Coming back to the sort of collaboration, obviously when COVID hit for many businesses, there was this huge migration to sort of Microsoft Teams um, that happened. It sort of the, the timing of Microsoft Teams landing was perfect in terms of COVID, you know, a year or so ago. What we're seeing now is a lot of people looking at how they can extend that and add telephony to the Microsoft Teams directly from the platform. And that, that's giving people a capability to sort of look at some of maybe their PABX estates if they have multiple sites and saying, you know, when when those are becoming sort of out of out of age, then you know, you know, Microsoft Teams calling is a very real opportunity to sort of leverage the um, you know, one single platform for collaboration. Thanks, John. Um, Foa, this is this is complex. This is interesting because despite mm. what we've been talking about, despite clearly the the importance of digital technologies and connectivity to businesses, the research that you guys have been doing, the Telsite research, also shows that more than half of SMBs don't actually have a digital strategy. Mm. So where where is that? How is that coming about? Where is that gap coming from? How does it exist? Uh, look, Andrew, I think. Um, uh, that digital strategy is a more comprehensive approach to technology adoption. You know, when we look at um, changing business models and changing the way products are uh, sourced and produced and, and uh, delivered to customers, then that's what we're talking about when we talk about digital strategy. And I think a lot of organizations have been in survival mode. They've been essentially just tactically taking on things, you know, just switching some things on and off um, so they can keep the lights on effectively for their business. So a lot of businesses haven't had the time or the resources really to look at a comprehensive digital strategy. But I guess what's encouraging is that of those that have been doing it, you know, over 80% have sort of fast-tracked a lot of their digital strategy um, adoption and over half indicated that they're fast-tracked it by more than six months. So, you know, there are SMBs out there that are really at the forefront of adopting technology as well. Um, but I think what um, a lot of organisations need to do, particularly as we sort of come out of the more difficult times or even these um, current lockdowns, is to really look at how the business can be transformed um, holistically uh, going forward and try and adopt some of those um, best practices that the other SMBs that are really accelerating their transformation are currently going through. Thanks, Fouad. Brendan, what about from an NBN perspective, how do you see that gap playing out and, and you know, where is it coming from in the first place? Yeah, and to add to Fouad's point, it's a good question, because at add Fouad's point, <clears throat> I said before, congratulations to SMBs on how quickly they adapted. The flip side to that is it shouldn't take a pandemic to have a, uh, you know, to move to, to move to digital. So I think I think it's great advice. And when I talk to a lot of SMBs, they're experts in their field. They know real estate really well. They know medical really well. What 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 they what they're scared of a lot of cases is technology. So I think there's a huge opportunity here not to have just got through the pandemic, but to take the pandemic as a learning around what do I need to do differently? How do I stay ahead of my competition? And I've been in this industry for a long time. And the number one question we used to ask customers when sitting down talking to a customer about their needs was how many staff do you have? I think that's becoming less and less relevant. To Alexi's point before about a, a media company, media companies have huge digital needs. And every week when we go through our, our, our results and, and the orders we're, coming, we're getting through, we start looking by industry. 
And each week, number one industry is medical. So the medical field is take, is going ahead leaps and bounds. Anything around medical have huge digital needs. We're seeing things like real estate agents starting to really take up digital. As things start to move online, high-definition video. Uh, we had a, a, an order a couple of weeks ago for a funeral home because they need to do large you know, autopsies and they need to send large files. So I think the world of how we used to look at things and how the, how the world is moving so quickly is creating great opportunities for businesses to think about their digital strategy. So my number one recommendation would be don't wait for a crisis or a pandemic. Be planned and think about what you need for the future and start preparing now. If I could just jump in here, actually, I just want to put a, a small business lens on, on the idea of this digital strategy. I think uh, to assist, a lot of small businesses have got the concept of, say, a business plan or a marketing plan. And what a lot of them uh, perhaps not have thought up until now have been thrown into the mix of what's occurred in the last 12 months is a digital plan. And you're absolutely right. It has to be entrenched in every aspect of your business. But I just wanted to also mention the fact that when you're digitally planning, it's not just about the infrastructure and the tech bits. And it's not even just about your website and your digital presence online when you're marketing. It's actually thinking about your staff. And when, as small businesses, we're hiring people or we're looking to grow, we now need to incorporate a different set of skills that we might not have thought of, say, two or three years ago into the mix when we're hiring people. And that's actually quite a stumbling block for small businesses at the moment, because coupled with not really necessarily understanding this new way of working, because you're still working it out as you go, you also need to expand your team because some people are doing really, really well during this um, this state of flux, but you might not know what the skill set is that, inc that that marries up with the digital transformation that you're expected to do as a business in the next 12 months. So I think it's very important that small businesses, when they're thinking about their digital planning, they're thinking about their digitization of their workforce and the people that work with them. Because you as a person may not have the skill set that is required in the next 12, 24, 36 months, but you need to make sure you surround yourself with a good team that are going to enable you to grow in this new world. So let's explore that in a bit more detail then, uh, Alexi. What do you feel, what are some of the, the biggest challenges that you see SMBs uh, facing in terms of taking that more proactive approach that um, we've just been referring to, to tech adoption? What are some of the difficulties and, and hurdles in, in taking that approach? Well, I would say right now we've got a big skills and unskilled workers shortage, um, particularly because of exacerbated by the um, border closures, both interstate and internationally. So we're seeing not only an unskilled worker shortage that would normally be filled the gap with, say, um, international students or backpackers, but actually a skilled shortage. And in fact, in some industries, we're seeing um, workers being poached from one another or a really high level of competitiveness for even quite low down, um, low skill set staff. So it is an exacerbated problem. And I think um, because all businesses, whether they are necessarily in that digital world or not, I mean, think about the hairdress hairdressing industry right now, they need to be thinking about growing because they're an essential service, but the skill, they're finding it difficult to get staff. Plus, they also need to make sure that their staff can work in this new world um, of digitisation. So it's sort of a bit of a knock-on effect. And I think that small businesses just need to be thoughtful and mindful of the growth of their team as they're thinking about the digitising into the future. But it is, it is quite a difficult policy issue at the moment, the shortage of skilled and unskilled workers. And uh, when we see, say, for example, the vet sector or, or, or skills adaption take place at a government level, that's a couple of years behind where the industry and small business is sitting now. So it's it's kind of a, a knock-on effect um, and it's another issue that's exacerbating the ability to digitise is the ability to find staff to meet those needs. Thanks for that. John, what about from your perspective, from an enablers point of view, what are some of the biggest challenges that you're seeing yeah, I mean, I, it, it, staff is obviously there. I mean, I think the nice thing is a lot of people. I think I think most businesses now, in the last twelve months, they've 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 had a they've much clearer lens on their own current position and the possibilities of what I would class the new world. You know, the new world being you know a digitized state using all the latest technology. Um, obviously, most people don't have the expertise in house and the skills and experience to to, to navigate that journey, and so. 
I think really the um, the, the sort of migration of getting from old world uh, to the new world um, for many is is the is the key point and understanding what the options are, understanding what your business needs specifically because it's not a one size fit all. I don't, uh, you know, I really don't don't believe. Um, and then I think making making the most of those, uh, you know, the technology to to get you there is really key. But it, it's really ensuring I think that it's not just technology for technology's sake. You, you've got to bring it back to achieving a business outcome, uh, and that is that's really critical. I, you know, and I think it, it, it's, there's no issue. I, I think if people actually accept that um, they're very likely to need help on this journey, you know, and obviously it's, you know, it's, it's, it's probably a fairly, it's a key role of a managed service provider like ourselves and other IT providers to help people navigate that um, and, and, and understand what the business, the specific business needs are and the business outcomes that need to be delivered. And help really helping on that journey. That that is the whole point, and I don't think there's any problem with that. You know, it, I think the um, technology delivers so much more value than it used to uh, for a, for a cost. Um, and I, so I think for many people there might be a, a level of real you know excitement and and, and surprise at, of how much how much benefit you can gain from the technology that's available today. Yeah, absolutely. It's been a very a very steep learning curve for uh, for us all. Just before we move on to the next questions, I actually want to give those of you watching at home, our audience, an opportunity to answer a question. We've got a poll for you. Uh, the poll question is, interested in your thoughts, what do you think is the biggest barrier in building a digital plan for your business, given everything that we've just been talking about from our perspectives, but interested to hear from you. So if you can, please fill out that poll, what do you think is the biggest barrier in building a digital plan for your business? I'll just pause for a moment, to give you an opportunity to plug in your thoughts there. Okay, I think that should be enough. We're gonna move on to another question. Foad, we'll go to you. So we've just been talking about some of the challenges. Let's move from challenges as we always do into opportunities. So my question for you, Foad, is what opportunities are ahead for businesses that can use their network connectivity and their tech stack as tools for growth? Where are the opportunities lying? Well, look, there's a number of opportunities. I guess notwithstanding the, the cost savings that potentially businesses could get through reduction in real estate needs and, and so forth, uh, you know, I think technology is really capable of powering every aspect of the business. And I guess um, once you have the right network in place and you've got things like, you know, high, high resolution video conferencing and the cloud applications and so forth, what are you kind of doing with that? And who uh, are, you, are you using to, to, to work with these tools that you have? Now, I guess one of the things that um, larger businesses have been doing for many years is looking at globally source, sourcing skills and capabilities by utilizing technology. And I think the, the, the tools are, are, are plentiful and available today for small businesses in, in Australia to utilize some offshore capabilities. So if we can break down some of the parochial challenges we have around staffing and look at the, the global pool of talent that's available there, uh, small businesses can use video conferencing and you know, these cloud tools to manage offshore workforces that can help uh, manage costs and also help the business grow quickly when there's a skills shortage. So I think there's, there's a lot of opportunities for small businesses that think outside of the box and utilize this technology that's really a global phenomenon right now. Thanks, Fahad. So we've been looking at challenges. We've been looking at opportunities. Let's pull those together, Alexi. Let's go to you. Let's look ahead now rather than the, the past 18 months. Let's look uh, into the future as best we can. Looking ahead, how can SMB leaders build on the changes that have happened to review their connectivity and technology and to try and be ready to meet the future challenges and opportunities? Well, one of the really big opportunities that small business has to assist with their growth and uh, I guess the organisation of their business and their processes and procedures is apps. And obviously there's some wonderful technological uh, solutions out there, but what's really important is that small businesses curate that app stack very carefully. I always think of an app stack as a little bit of a Jenga 
a game where sometimes if it gets a little bit too high and you pull one out, the entire thing can collapse. So it's really important that you seek good advice. And that might be from a mentor within your industry, your professional association, and again, your management IT consultant who might be able to help you with what the best options are for you. And I would also say, just be really careful about clients or outside stakeholders being able to influence the way that you um, create that app stack. So I'll give you, for example, um, say a bookkeeper who is expected by their clients to um, access files on multiple different platforms. That means you need to learn how those platforms work. You need to make sure that you've got access, clients got access, the, the data is secure. Where is that information? Is it in, impeding on my, um, my capacity that my tech has? And all those questions need to be answered. So in a way, you have to curate the information and the data that it comes into your business as well as the apps that you use. Having said that though, they create a wonderful opportunity for you to be quite organized and processed. Um, you think of a great app like Tradypad, which is specifically designed for tradespeople out there in the Australian market, which is a, a great piece of tech that can be used. So when you have this situation of just app upon app and upon app, it can get very confusing. Um, so I suggest to small business owners that they go out there and really get some good advice before they implement it. We won't even talk about the amount of time it takes to implement a new app into your business as well. But also I wanted to talk a little bit about subscription creep. Um, so a, a terminology that means you don't realize that you're paying incrementally all these subscriptions until you add them all up and realize that it can mean hundreds or thousands of dollars a month. So something to be conscious of if there's something you're no longer using, get rid of it because it's not only impacting your processes, but also the data and the cost. So there's ways of managing um, apps and technology within your business to help you grow and make sure that you don't get in a state of overwhelm. Um, and again, making sure that you're planning for the future of that what's the next iteration of the app that you're using because what um, is important to remember is that when small businesses are working in their business they rely so heavily on that technology and we need to make sure that um, they're supported both with the infrastructure of things like the NBN that the apps don't suddenly disappear and they're left floundering and thirdly that policymakers are making sure that the the, the pathway to the use of those apps and the use of technology continues unabated. Yeah, some great advice. Thanks, Alexi. John, I might ask you the same question. What can small businesses do to, to get ready and to, to put themselves in the best position in order to meet some of those challenges and, and opportunities ahead? Yeah, sure. Um, I, I mean, I think probably the, the starting point for me would be uh, to get a really clear view of what what technology and applications and digitization can do to advance your own specific business you know be really clear on that you know there, there will be some hopefully some very obvious step change um gains that can be made from you know it could be one two or three um fundamental sort of uh, application changes or transformation you know uh, changes i think if you pick those key areas that will deliver the biggest outcome and then work backwards from there. I, I think the rest will flow. So once you once you're clear on the the, the fundamental changes you want to make, you know, um, I would then really suggest that you actually go probably get in, you know, two or three different providers, MSPs, IT providers that can come in, um, get an understanding of what you're aiming to achieve, and then and get them to explain how they would approach getting you from A to B, you know, old world to new world in, in, in the sort of context I've been talking about. Because part of that process is it, you will find you'll A, you'll probably get a synergy with, you know, um, one or two of the providers that where you'll build trust. And I think that's a really key part, obviously, providers, you know, delivering IT services, and particularly if you're going to rely on them to deliver that for you and keep your business running, there's a massive amount of trust um, involved in, in that relationship. And it's really key that you have, you build that trust. But I think equally part of that process is you will see and that trust will build naturally. You'll also see what is available. You'll understand if the, the, the partner's got the right sort of um, skill sets and if they're well aligned to your sort of culture and, and business mindset. And I think those are those are the really key points, I would say. The exciting thing, I think, and it, is that really, you know, there is a really good chance now for SMBs who may not have invested much, you know, uh, strategically in IT to leapfrog a lot of a lot of legacy IT that is no, no longer needed and, and end up in this new world that is so much simpler, cleaner, more agile 
there are so many benefits, the real benefits that are available. I think, I think my my suggestion would be to anyone if, if they're sort of sitting on the sideline knowing that it's there and then it's not sure if they should make the move, is is take that sort of approach to to uh, to achieving it. Thanks, can I John. just, um, can yes, I just add to what John was saying there? Um, I think what he was talking about at the beginning with having um, an end in mind. So when you're planning out that digital strategy, I think it's kind of like a business plan. We go, oh, where will I be in two, five, ten years' time? What do I want my business to do? John, you're absolutely right. You need to be thinking about what the outcome is of that digital strategy as, as you build it. And that's sort of three-pronged. What does my tech and my hardware and my foundation like NBN look like? What does my software and my app stack look like? And how are those things going to help me get to where I want to be with my business in two, five, ten years' time? Okay, thanks, yeah. Alexi. I just wanted to give you all quickly an opportunity to, to answer this question. It, it sounds to many people, perhaps, who are watching that there's a lot of different things to do. What I'm going to ask each of you is, from your perspective, where should people start? People who are watching today, what is a good place, a good strategy that they can start with right now? One thing each. We might start with, uh, with you, Brendan. Yeah, the number one thing I would say, so I think a, a lot of good things have been covered. So number one is research. And I like John's idea about going and talking to multiple people. They'll probably all tell you something slightly different and you need to work out what, what makes sense for your business. What we've been trying to do within MBN is build out lots and lots of case studies. Um, so there's a, a, quite a few on our website now, um, mbn.com.au slash business. So that's a good starting point. Have a look there for what businesses have done what things. That'll give you ideas. And we want to build more and more um, of, a, of a range of different case studies so you can learn from what, what, what others are, are doing. And then go and talk to multiple people. If someone says something's not available, check it. Check it with someone else. So if you're on something and it's not meeting your needs now or for the future, uh, it's quite easily to, to make some changes. And then research, what do you want to do? What do you want to use the network for? As I said, we live in we live in fantastic times. Um, learn what others are doing, because not only about attracting staff, attracting customers, managing stakeholders, managing suppliers, all of it can be done differently these days from technology. And I think fantastic times and a great opportunity to learn what others are doing. Great, thanks very much, Brendan. Yeah, okay. So Brendan's suggestion is research, and there could always be another way. Foad, what about from your perspective? Where would be the best place for someone to start? Well, look, I, I'm a researcher, so I would uh, echo um, uh, Brendan's comments around research and market research and, and understanding best practice. I think when we do do our research and we speak to SMEs and what they're looking at in terms of future IT investment, one of the places they're talking about the most is workplace modernization. So, you know, a lot of organizations today have looked at hybrid workforces, um, have looked at use of uh, technology to augment the, the employee experience. And I think um, to set your business up right for the future and to sort of mitigate some of the challenges around poaching and so forth, uh, modernizing the workplace is, is really critical. Um, so I think from my point of view, um, understanding and researching the modern workplace is a really good place to start. All right, thanks for that. Alexi, apart from research, what would be your suggestion? <laughs> I actually, I was going to, I was going to build on what I was thinking of something completely different. Then Fo had raised a really good point, which is um, to plan for the future. So we're living in really reactionary times right now. Something crazy happens, like you're forced into your home for two weeks, and you have to be able to react. So rather than being reactionary, reactionary, think about what could happen in the future and plan for that. And I don't mean sort of like, you know, we end up living in Mars or something crazy like that, but what could happen to your business that could completely um, force you to pivot or, or throw you off centre and make sure that you're prepared for that. And this does take time to stop and think. And that's what's so difficult for a lot of small businesses is to find the time out or away from your business that's not on the eighth day of the week to actually stop and plan for the future and lean on your professional associations. There will be someone who is a mentor or a leader in your field who has gone through this process and is more than happy to share their journey with you and share your experiences with others as well. So, you know, if it doesn't exist in your profession, then create a little bit of a, um, a chat group which talks about specifically digitization for your field. And you'll be amazed the sort of information that you'll get from your, um, your co-workers and your other small business colleagues.
Thanks, Alexi. John, you touched on this before, but interested to see if you've got any other thoughts. Where is a good place that you would recommend an SMB to start this journey? Yeah, I, I, mean, I obviously all, all the stuff that's been said by the others is that you know it, it's it's getting peer insights, industry insights is, is a is a really key part to know what the option availabilities are. But I think for me, one would be really prioritize the bigger wins for your business. Um, don't try and spread yourself too thin. Um, I think it's dangerous to try and you know let to try and make technology be this perfect nirvana across everything. Mm -hmm. So I think really look at the, the business outcomes, the real priorities that you want to have and focus on those and get them done. You know, so, so take them to, to completion almost one at a time so that you get the outcome rather than getting confused by, you know, if you have two or three different strands going off and none of them sort of get delivered fully, then you probably won't get the outcomes you'd like. And, and I think the only other piece I would say is, um, Keep reevaluating. I would almost say every six months, technology is progressing and developing so fast. If you sort of put a project plan in of three or four major projects, and it might take you a year to to deliver those, um, if you haven't started delivering a couple of those within six months, reevaluate at six months because you may actually find, and then go back to your research, you may find there's been some fairly significant developments around applications and and, the, and processes that that allow you to, to get on the front end of what could be the latest new technology. Okay, thanks, John. We've got uh, just over 10 minutes to go and we have got a bunch of questions have come through from our audience. So thank you very much for those of you who are watching who have sent through these questions. Uh, I'm just gonna throw these questions to the panel and anybody should feel free to jump in. We're gonna start with this question. It's a double barreled question and uh, somebody's gonna be brave enough to try and predict what is over the horizon. Imagine if we'd had this two years ago, this panel, and I asked you to predict. Uh, so here's the question. What are the big changes on the horizon for SMBs and how can we continue to build on this momentum? So what are the big changes on the horizon and how can we build on them? Who wants to kick us I'll, off? I'll have a go. Uh, it sounds like a policy question. Um, <laughs> Um, I think the big changes that are coming are the um, increase in speed of digitization of those around you. So I guess you need to be thinking about what's happening on a competition level um, as well. What, what, are the, what are your competitors doing? What do their websites looking, look like doing? And I'm talking about quite a small business lens. How fast are things moving around you and be ready to move with that? Um, another thing would be the globalisation because of the increased, uh, you know, use of online sales, for example. Small businesses need to be ready to compete globally and fast. And you have to think about your product, your service. Is it available? Is it something that you can deliver overseas in this new globalised market? I mean, online sales have jumped between in six months to, from 9 to 16% um, of total sales. That's far beyond what, what was expected at a government level. So be ready for what the global market will bring your business and think ahead um, for what those changes could mean for you. All right. And thanks, just to Alexi. add to Alexi's point, if, if you're an SMB, You've made a step change in the last 18 months, uh, but so is everyone else. So um, you're, 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 you're on a parallel with everyone else. So you need to be continuously thinking about how, how you continue to develop that. A couple of other trends that we've seen. Um, so first of all, everyone adapted really quickly to work from home. I think people have struggled a bit more to this hybrid workforce. We've got three in the office. We've got three people from home. How do you connect? How do you make sure everyone's on a level playing field? How do you make sure you hear from the people that are sitting remotely? So we're seeing those sort of changes and people trying to adapt to being in the office and being at home. Mm -hmm. And I think the third piece for me is, while today's been about technology, I actually think that SMBs have a, such a head start. The biggest thing for an enterprise is how do we adapt? How do we take the old world and move it into the new world? SMBs have less of that challenge. They can start in the new world. They can implement an application and have it up and running in weeks. Enterprises cannot do that. It takes months and a big change program. So spend as much time on the cultural piece as you do the technology because technology is just an enabler. It's the cultural piece and how people use the technology and get the best out of technology that's the game changer for SMBs. Yeah, I think I, my, my piece would be, um, you know, and I'm thinking about business leaders who may not be so technology embracing you know and there's probably quite a few out there in the smb space i would 
I would sort of recommend maybe, obviously, I think so I'd said the research shows 57% of, of workforce now are digital natives. Find the person in your business who is passionate about technology, who has a, uh, a level-headed approach to probably strategy and maybe how that could benefit your business and, and make them the champion. Uh, you know, and, and I think in that way, you could really, you know, you, you, you don't have to, as a business leader, be immersed and understand all of this complex new technology at the, at the rate it's changing. But for digital natives, it's the stuff that floats their boat. So get them involved, I would say, and, and, and use that use that passion from, from their side to, to progress your business. And to round off the, the comments, Andrew, I think that one of the big changes that SMBs um, can expect on the horizon is the same as most other businesses, an explosion in the amount of data an organization has and the, and the way that you could use this data using machine learning, artificial intelligence. There's issues around securing this data and also accessing this data um, to make business decisions um, that can help your business stay ahead of the competition in many ways. This includes e-commerce data, includes other customer interaction data, um, supplier data and so forth. So I think as businesses, SMBs and large become more data centric and software driven businesses, um, you know, handling and managing this data is going to become one of the critical aspects for all businesses going forward. All right, thanks, Fahad. We're going to move on to another question. Uh, Brendan, you sort of touched on this before when you said that you should research because there's always another way. So I'm going to, uh, we might start with you. This question is, what is one thing that many businesses don't know that could help them make a digital business plan or be more agile? Oh, one thing. That's, uh, that's a pretty hard one, <laughs> the one thing. I, I think, I think... Oh, if you look at the, the research that's come out of uh, Telsite and the fact that uh, video conferencing, you know, was was number one that, that's changed in the last 12 months, video conferencing has been around for quite a while. I've been talking to small businesses for, about video conferencing for so long and each year we'd see a slight uptick. Why? Because they're busy, they're doing other things. Now I don't think you need to talk to an SMB about video conferencing because everyone uses Zoom, Teams, WebEx, et cetera, et cetera. So, uh, so my, one, my one recommendation would be, uh, or the one thing would be constantly look at, you know, what's happening next year, what's happening the year after, where am I at? So it would be constantly looking forward. Okay, who else would like to or would anybody else like to offer the one thing? Yes, go ahead, Alexi. Yeah. Andrew, just keep learning. And this is something that um, I think small businesses, when perhaps we've moved in out of corporate and we're used to that whole learning and development cycle, we don't have a learning and development cycle as small businesses unless you've got it as part of your professional association's expectations of membership. But keep learning. Keep on top of what's going on um, and the changes, and especially in tech in your industry, and, and just make sure that you're abreast of those changes. Yeah, good advice. If we think about how much we've learned in a very short period of time, there's still uh, a lot more ahead. John or Foad, only if you've got uh, thoughts on that. I think, I, and this 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 may may be good for some people, not good for others, depending on how their business is going. You know, in this time, but um, obviously for a lot of a lot of businesses with the sort of lockdowns, there, there have been areas where hopefully, you know, if the businesses maintain the revenue. Um, there have been some areas of savings, you know, transportation, travel, um, you know, potentially some some aspects of office cost will all will all have reduced. I would I would just say try and shift some of that to IT budgets, and and I don't say that to try and necessarily spend more, but make make IT a a, a strategic part of your budgeting process because. It's more important than an office space these days. You know, it is your business and, and, and going forward, it will be your business. So I think just make sure that the budgets are allocated to, to at a strategic level for them to enable your business to grow and, and, and innovate and, and be the best it can be in the marketplace. OK, and Fawad, no pressure, but can you tell us one thing that we don't know already? Yeah, look, I think it comes down to agility and capturing or harnessing that motivation that happened in that early, you know, those early days of the pandemic where, you know, businesses managed to speed things up. You know, they adopted technologies, they changed the way that they did business so rapidly, you know, no other event sort of caused 
this kind of rapid change uh, in, in my living uh, memory anyway. So I think to capture that motivation and to capture that spirit is really important going forward for small businesses. Not to kind of say, well, you know, that's what we did back in to year, the year 2000, but really say, well, look, that's how we changed our business in the year 2000. And this is how we've become more agile in terms of how we treat all kinds of challenges going forward. And I think for me, that that's probably one of the areas that businesses could really capture the, the essence of, of the, the era and, and improve themselves going forward. Thanks for that. John, this is a question that has been earmarked uh, for you. Who should we get guidance and advice from to build a digital foundation that is customised to our business's needs? Um, obviously, you know, if, if you have an existing provider that helps you with IT, then obviously talk to them. I think if you look, look at look at your your current application providers as well, and, and and get a get an idea of what their future looks like, and get you know um, understand where they're going with their technology. And now that doesn't mean um, only stay with them because you you absolutely need to do the research and look at what's available because there are so many options these days. And and I I would probably say that's a that's a key that's a key point. But uh, you know, talk to talk to a company like us, you know, uh, or other MSPs or other IT service providers. You know, we, we we're here purely to to help companies go from old world to new world in a successful way and and derive maximum business value from technology. I mean, that if if you find a business that can help you do that successfully, you probably find that they will deliver so much more value than any any cost um, associated to it, and it and it will be a strategic um, benefit to the business. Okay, great advice. We have got about a minute and a half left. We've got one more question. So whoever wants to jump in with a quick answer. Uh, question is, the positive impacts of a digital strategy and tech adoption are great, but how do I get the importance across to other management or team members within my business? Who would like to uh, throw, throw us a thought there? I would actually suggest that what John said, I think it was John who was saying, um, find champions within your business who have a particular interest in, um, uh, you know, this skill set that you want to adopt as a, as a business. Find someone that can champion it for you and, and give them the autonomy to move ahead uh, with those sort of changes and, and help bring everybody else with them. Brendan, you're nodding furiously at that answer. Do you have anything to add? Yeah, yeah. T test and learn. Uh, so I think that's a great way to do it. And then secondly, convince those that aren't convinced that uh, standing still is actually sending them backwards. Show them that there's a much better world and if they don't move, then then, then that's the threat to them, not that doing something is the threat. Oh, I like that one. All that's right, a, I like that one too. That's a really good quote. Can someone write that down? <laughs> It's, that was uh, fantastic. It's all being recorded so we can get the gems from Brendan's response just then. We are pretty much out of time. So I just first of all wanted to uh, thank each and every one of you for your time today. John, thank you very much. Voad, thank you. Alexi, thank you. And Brendan, we thank you all very much for your time. Just a reminder to those of you who are watching, it's all being recorded. So you will be able to get a link to this uh, very soon down the track. Thank you all for your time today. And to you, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for joining us. We really appreciate your time. Stay safe. Thank you.